not quite sure if things are working right now. I'm just going to assume that they are working until someone screams in the chat. And then we're going to do something. Anyone here? Alright. Seems that seems that we are alive. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see, um expect to have a lot of people since I didn't really announce it nowhere and I really don't want to take uh, viewers from the uh, shard uh, shard showdown from um, manifesto and Matt but uh, at the same time I just felt like uh, streaming so if I'm going to play tonight and this is a quiet night figured that we would be streaming so I got two replays I don't want to watch, so we're going to start with that. Been working on this um, Chrono Demon deck for a while now, and uh, been doing a lot of iterations. And um, this one feels right. It's always the same thing though. Like, it's going to get far behind, <laughs> and somehow, some way, the deck is going to figure out a way. Like the deck is going to get back on track and win games like from sitting like between 2 and 10 HP and it's <laughs> it's always fun to watch I really like watching these games I, I play this deck I wouldn't say that it's the best ever but <laughs> at the same time it makes for very entertaining matches and we've got two good ones so let's just start with that they're both very cool uh, the first one, what was the first one? The first one was... The first one was against a blood... Okay, yeah, I remember. Against a blood white deck. So, thing to know about this Chrono Demon deck is that it, it really just doesn't have any interaction whatsoever before turn 3. Um, the only thing that it runs is... Uh, Guidance lights and uh, and the guidance card. And this game, this is a, a very very strong start. Because for every time what the equipment guiding light does is that when it come uh, when you fate weave, you get two blessings into your deck. So and when you play it, it fate weaves. So what it means is that when you play one, you get two blessings. And if you play a second one, you get four blessings. If you play a third one, you get six blessings. So at that point, we've got two plus four plus six blessings already in the deck. And if we play any guidance, we're going to get six. So we've got a ton of blessings in the deck. But you see, the deck, the way it plays, is always gets you know very far behind. It just gained a bunch of health, but for the most part, like the opponent is going to develop big board every single time. And this is not a deck that is going to do well against aggressive decks. It's not meant to be winning against aggressive decks. It's meant to be winning against mid-range and control decks. Hey, look. Your siege was a very rough one. I won, but uh, it was a hard-fought uh, battles. So, yeah. You see, double guidance here, we're adding 12 more blessings in the deck, and at this point it's just 68 cards, and there's more that there's nearly 30 blessings in the deck. So we're going to be able to absorb a couple attacks, to say the least, and at some point the way it's going to work is that we're going to take a bunch of turns, draw a bunch of cards, and avoid everything. <laughs> the other yeah, the other win condition is um, 
Oops. It's uh, Angel of Foresight with uh, its equipment. That makes it so that we have a ton of actions in the deck thanks to the blessings and other like uh, Mastery of Time and Eyes of the Heart. So if, if this gives us an inevitability because if one of these resolves and the opponent is not burying our deck, we're just going to win. Like, it's, it's just a matter of if the deck survives, it is naturally going to win. It doesn't need to do anything special, it just needs to play its cards. And the actions that I have in the deck are, action, are not removal, they don't interact with combat. So the AI just always plays the card when, they, when he has access to them. So that works really, really well in this situation. Because the cards that the AI gets, it just plays, right? Regardless of the board state. So that's how you ensure that, you know, this, this card here is going to do its work. But you see, we're facing a, a very significant board already. We're, we're at 27 health, but and now down to 17. Well, this would be the perfect timing to uh, start voiding things with Chrono Demon. This is uh, exactly what the AI does. However, it only voids the non-Avatar cards. And we've got Avatar of Lust and Avatar of Darkness. So this is not ideal. We were able to resolve an angel of foresight though, so at this point, it really just is, can we survive a couple turns? And we're going to get a couple turns, so we should be good. The thing that is really, really nice is that there's a lot of cards that cost zero in the deck right now. So when we play uh, Eyes of the Art, we're likely going to resolve like three to five to six cards during this that, that one turn. And that gives us nearly infinite <laughs> charges, so we're going to draw a ton of cards. And that's not accounting to guidances and taking more turns, which leads to more cards. Like you see here, getting a couple blessings that gives two charges and then a charge. We're already at seven back, back to seven, right? So. Yeah, I attacks with the angels, they just die. We don't care about them. It's just there we don't we don't care about the angel dying at all. Like starts the turn with nine resources, draws a couple cards, and we get the other piece of resistance, Frost Mare. I love this card. I really really do. So card in opposing end get cost plus five. And that cry revert all cards in opposing ends. That card by itself is not that great because when they draw their removal, they just kill it and then all the cards reverts back to normal. But if you run the feet equipment, uh, when they get a card into their hand, it either gets plus one to plus five cost, on average plus two to three, right? So if one resolves, usually that means that the opponent is not going to play any card for the rest of the game, right? Maybe one. But if you have Chrono Demon and the Frostmare on the board, you can see like 9, 10, 10, 10, only has 6. So it's going to take a very long time before, you know, they can resolve any card. And we're not in a great position right now, but, you know, drawing some cards, having access to a lot of uh, charges, that should be fine. Alright. So... Drawing a card that costs 10 now for six and we were able to gain a very significant amount of health this game uh, this game one two three four so we got four times two plus all the health from the resources drawing one more you know getting a couple more blessings drawing more cards and another frost mirror that means everything is plus 50 plus 10 risk plus 10 cost and new cards get on average plus five, <laughs> like between plus five, plus two and plus ten. So yeah, at this point, you know, this is a problem. But at the same time, where we've got two frost mirrors and Crown demon, and we're gaining turns right now, creating angels of foresight while gaining turns. Get another turn here. And uh, this is just going to be too much pressure, and I don't think the attacker is going to take, have another opportunity to attack. And 
you know, just facing casual 19 damage. And this is this is how did it work? It's always going to get really far behind, and at which point we're on turn like five and six, and it it, it either will wipe the board or start taking a couple turns. And after a couple turns, normally it would wipe the board or play a Frostmare that will lock their end and the deck at that point stabilizes and usually is able to overcome. So we're going to watch the other one because that one was way, way closer than this one. But they're, they're, with this deck, it's always a close call. Right, because it's just no pressure deck. It's very rare that your opponent is not going to do anything until third five, right? So here we have a, a version of the uh, Lily Groove Wonder deck. This one is a very cool one actually. It's uh, centered around spirits instead of. Uh, I don't know if they're playing Rectory, but Luminia deck is a very cool replacement if you don't have Rectory. Give plus one plus one to all other troops. And we see again the AI you know opening with guidance. The only the only cards that cost less than three in the deck, it's guidance and uh, guiding lights. So that's always the plan, it's always what's happening. First two turns. Turn three plays we've got uh Tidal Eddy that will mess with our opponent's hand. Or uh, any licks with the chest equipment that will just destroy something when it comes into play. So, yeah, I choosing not to destroy this. Like, playing the Gaiden like. We've got six blessings in the deck right now. And we've got. We've gained one, two. We've gained three. Three health, I believe. Well, not too bad. We've got a Crown of Demon in hand, so. Should be okay. You know, Anelix coming in and dealing with the biggest troop on the board that he can hit. It's fine. Anelix has a draw card on it, and the AI tends to always attack with it. So that tends to work really well. Getting a, a lot of pressure right now. But you know what? Turn 5, AI could just play taking turns or just you know, void everything. It's not going to go super well because of the Dark Heart though. <laughs> Two Dark Heart is uh, a bit much. But at the very least it was a fog, right? At the very least it made them... it, it gained us a turn. And I think that's perfect, perfectly fine with a list like that. Even more so it re-triggers Anelix if there were any on the board and that's still significant. Gaining a bunch of health with the guiding lights. We're at six resources. We've got some, you know, bunch of turns that can be gained. Uh, opponents doing combat tricks. Now at eight, and this is where we need to stabilize, right? So taking a bunch of taking turns. I like because the uh, mastery of time and eyes of the heart are legendary cards. AI always prioritize them, which is. Perfect for this. And now we get another Chrono Demon. We still have another turn in the bank with a bunch of card draw and Tidality, amongst other things, reduce the ends of our opponent. So it's a discard card. And you know, opponent doesn't have any cards in end in their end. We've got a million card taking turns, augmenting the cost in their end, and we've got another board wipe. So we're in a per very nice spot. And the list is working perfectly right now. You know, Soul Severance can't do anything. And AI prioritizes troops over the rest. Uh, so uh, it, it does work really well because it tends to, it will play playing the Frost Mares before it will play the rest of the actions. And that's okay because when it plays a Frost Mare, it means that the opponent is not going to be able to play cards on their next turn. So, unless you're dead on the very next attack, which is unlikely because you have now have a 5-5, five, five, you should be okay. And if you get to untap with a Frostmare and on the board, you just start taking turns or playing Chrono Demons or whatever, and then you're perfectly fine. 
and if they somehow you know remove the chrono demon that voided the frostmare then they're just not going to be able to play any card so that tends to work really well uh, again this is not a a deck that is going to do super well if um it's not going to be a deck that's going to do well against aggressive decks but it's meant to be dealing with control decks which it does super well and it's also meant to be dealing with uh, you know mid rangey not too aggressive group based deck like the Lilypad deck and the other uh, other decks like that. Although Lilypad can have a very strong aggressive starts, um, it does. It, 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 you know if it resolves a a Chrono Demon on turn on on turn five, usually that's enough to get the win. So. Let's do the deck. Where is the deck? This is the deck. The one thing that I found that the um, that would that hurt this deck significantly is an elix in the warden deck with the discard random card gem on it. Uh, if they play some, if they play one early, usually that's enough to you know just break the deck because it doesn't have early game really and um doesn't do much so what we could do is change say angel of foresight for something that would deal with um that would deal with uh anelix but at the same time it's not necessarily meant to deal with that kind of deck so it's just you just want to deal with anything that creates a long game and this this works well i mean if someone comes in with an aggressive deck and it meets this one then yeah sure it's going to do something else but i like it as a first deck it's it's there's not a lot of people running that kind of deck and frostmer is not really run that much this is this is my favorite card in the game so i'm i get to run this card i really 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 love and uh yeah it's just good stuff would be changing guiding lights, guiding lights, and the yet equipment for something else. Uh, this version is running what uh, one, two, three, four, five, twenty-four resources. It has a high resource, you know, a lot of cards with high cost. So if you're not playing guiding light and the guiding light and the yet equipment, you kind of want something else that helps you survive the early game. Um, it could be removal. Uh, but yeah, like the Angel of Foresight and the Guiding Lights are the, the slots that you want to switch back. I really love Frostmare with taking turns. And taking turns with Chrono Demon is absolute best because you get to play it earlier than you would. And often you can take turn. The eye will be playing Chrono Demon and taking a turn. And that's just very, very, very strong. Same thing with Frostmare. It's like... Frostmare, take Frostmare, then you get a free turn and then take a turn, right? Uh, one card that, if you don't have Frostmare, the other card that could do roughly similar things would be um, Gatekeeper. Gatekeeper with the other equipment as 5 cost and it prevents the opponent from playing cards on their next turn. So you don't want to run the chest because uh, you run it with uh, in, uh, an elix, which is, you know, best in slot, but uh, five cost gatekeeper is pretty darn good as well. Like Angel of Foresight could be just, you know, a couple of gatekeepers. If you don't have the Angel of Foresight, they do cost a ton, right? So you could just jam the gatekeepers here. Uh, Gain turns in Chrono Demon are what makes the deck works. The deck was lacking removal, and Anelix is just insane because it's three costs, remove a troop, then draw a bunch of cards, and also pressure their health, um, which also is very, very hard to remove. And if you happen to remove it because of Chrono Demon and they deal with the Chrono Demon, you get a free removal. Now that, that works extremely well. I could see um, replacing, say, Guiding Light with uh, Buccaneer. 
because I recently uh, saw someone playing Buccaneer in, in their defense deck and it used to be that Buccaneer was targeting it, uh, the AI would be targeting its own troop with Buccaneer all the time, like it, as it was, as it was some kind of buff. But I played against someone this morning, and AI used Buccaneer correctly, and that's really really cool. And if you want, just want to buy time, right? If you want to gain tempo, this is a fantastic card to do it. So. If you expect to be facing like a lot of true base decks, I can see you know, maybe replacing Guiding Lights with a bunch of Buccaneers. And Buccaneers, they are cool because if you void them with Chrono Demon, and then they kill your Chrono Demon, you get a bunch of other triggers back, right? <laughs> so that's kind of nice. Uh, although if I'd be switching Guiding Light to anything else, I think I'd be switching to something that can uh, block Anelix or something that can target Anelix. I'm not quite sure what we could get in Diamond Sapphire that can do that though. That would be used properly with the eye. It could just be a good blocker. Uh, by the way, you do not want to run book smarts. Uh, the eye will just kill itself trying the whole library, even with just one. So you kind of want to avoid that. You, what do you do? Um, create a random action. Uh, random action. Creating random actions with AI is really, really not what you want to be doing. Uh, it just screws with your deck building, and because. You know, you build a deck with the AI in mind and the sequencing that it will be doing. The fact that I'm just running Guidance and Guiding Light, the fact that I have no two drops solves a lot of problems with the way the, the AI works. Uh, and these two Fate Weaves, and the AI does Fate Weave decently, so it really helps, like, always ensuring that you we, we need to get to five and six resources for this deck to work oh no eight triggers of fate weave uh, oh and uh, this one has fate weave too so that's 12 trigger of fate weave oh that's that's more than enough and i don't want to run too many you know slow shards so i'm already running these because it's kind of hard to hit all the thresholds we need uh, sapphire sapphire and diamond diamond so by turn four five so that, that's why I'm not running Fate Weave shards. Uh, I do want to make sure that we're running, you know, on 3 we're playing a 3 drop, on 4 we're playing either an Angel of Foresight or a Mastery of Time if we use Tidal D on turn 3. Uh, maybe Assimilate could be cool. It does have a... Uh, oh, uh, head equipment. Oh, okay. Put target troop randomly to the top five. Deploy, create a copy. Yeah, he's going to target something stupid with that, and then it's going to play something stupid, and it's going to copy itself and create more stupid things in your deck. I don't think that that's what we want to do. Um, hmm. Stun target opposing troop. Oh, there's an equipment on this one. Revert and transform target card in play or on the chain. Into a eight heart fate weave. Hmm. I can't. I mean, <laughs> I'm tempted to run this with the uh, equipment to see what happens. Not quite sure what would happen with the AI, but that now we're running this instead of the guiding lights, right? So, yeah, not great. Could be running Sylvan Tavern the Adjudicator. It can block, um, it can block an Elix, but for the most part, the AI is just going to attack with it. But Adjudicator with three, uh, three cost Adjudicator that gains five health and. 
may or may not be drawing cards is a super good proposition. It might be against control decks. I can see, you know, running Agitator with Trinket Equipment over Angel of Foresight. That's a ton of health and card draw and, you know, for three you can do a lot worse than all these things. Uh, put a random buffalo troop from your deck into play. Okay. Mm, no. <laughs> no. What do you do? No, no, no. Not, yeah, there's a... Uh, I don't think we want a four cost in that slot. Transform up to two target cards into ice blocks. That could be... That could be enough to survive a long time though. Like on turn four, yeah, I just read two ice blocks. Mm. Now we're into the very expensive stuff and it needs to be extremely good. Why you control the terminus? This has spell shield. Mm, yeah, I think. Worst car when you play true. Uh, Owls of Kukitan and Blizzard are a lot worse when you play against a human because they're going to play around them for the most part, and they're just going to hold their resources and do something uh, very strong with them. I. I I don't remember if the AI does play uh, Owls or Blizzard. Uh, for a long time, I believe the AI was not even playing these. But if the AI plays them, uh, this is a Trinket, right? So Trinket is opposing troops and their play exhausted. If the AI does play Owls of Kuketen, I could get behind that. I believe for a long time it wasn't playing it at all, but that could be that could be marginally better than uh, than even uh, guiding light. Problem is that it gets removed by uh, Chrono Demon, so I guess you just buy the time, and then when they play, when you play Chrono Demon, you win anyway, so you don't care about removing all of Kuketan. And if they do kill from the demon, you get the owls back. That could work. Blizzard is a bit hard because it's two diamond. Oh, it's only one. Okay. We can't really run the equipment for it though. So we have to take it as is. And as is, it's not good enough. It doesn't exhaust the troops. So we'd need to run the chest equipment for it. But if we do run the chest equipment for it, we can replace it with an Elix. Uh, I really don't think we want to replace an Elix with Blizzard. If, if you add burn mentally, if that shit doesn't anymore. Okay. If it's the criminal. Yeah. No. I Blizzard I don't think so. I could I, I'm I certainly could get behind uh trying out having uh, replacing guiding lights with um owls. Oh wait. We can't run the trinket equipment on this one. It's a trinket, right? Yeah, if we're not running the trinket on this, I don't think I would be playing owls of Kukadan. So, are we losing the trinket on Angel of Foresight? I don't think so. Yeah, I know Songstring is just is going to be breaking things at some point. I haven't opened any uh, siege packs besides the two first that I have, and I got two equipment that doesn't really matter. So, 
I don't have the Warden, but yeah, the Warden with the uh, the new equip is just uh, infinite turns waiting to happen. <laughs> it, it's a two card infinite attack turn combo, so it's not that bad. It's not that hard. You get an Elix on turn three, and then you play the Warden on turn two. You have Rhinos on Anelix, and then you Anelix attacks, create a Rhino, you get another, you get to ready everything and have another attack. Anelix attacks again, create another Rhino, and then you've got infinite attacks and infinite troops. Uh, that's a, that's a job. That's another win combo that I'm life back opening. I don't think so. Uh... I I'd like to get the cards and work with the cards, but I don't I I just can't I guess I guess trying to get some amount of cards is better than just waiting a million year for a battle board that is just going to be cosmetic. But We'll see. So this is the first deck that I was running in my keep. The other one uh, that keeps getting changed and updated is... Uh, where is it? Oh, it is here. Which is the uh, Angel of Glory deck. And this deck is super cool. Uh, put likely just needs to be some amount of removal, likely the Crypt Banishing, but for the rest it does work really really well. I'm running a low shard count, but uh, at the same time there's a bunch of Fate Weave triggers available. Uh, we run uh, Life Drain on an Enix with when it deals damage to a player everything gets plus one plus one. And this with the equipment to just remove some amount of early game threats and then just steal the game otherwise so this kills something when it comes into play this as well this becomes bigger you know starts blocking very very quickly gain a bunch of health and you've got some things that take over the game so this is somewhat of a, a anti aggro list it's not going to stomp on a grow deck, but it's going to be a hard battle. And it, it can go over the top uh, over the top a lot of decks. The other part is that uh, if you somehow trigger Angel of Glory once, you likely just win on the spot. So this is why I have it. Like it's uh, just you know uh, if you trigger Angel of Glory you win. And if you don't then you you have a very, very strong game plan. Although, I think I'm just removing Poet. AI always prioritize Paladin, Crusader, Eaters. It prioritizes basically everything above Poet, so... Maybe this just need to be Decree... Decree of Banishing. Not running the uh, Glove Equipment, but uh, yeah. I don't know about Ardent Recruiter. We do have like 12 Ardent Troops with um, the Recruiter, I guess it goes up to 16. I don't know. It's one more troop, but at the same time, if I'm removing Guiding Light, I kind of want to at least get to 20. 2 resources so that means just two cards instead of four uh could definitely change the crusader for something but if you remove the crusader then uh the the alt outrider then you have less hardened troops i don't know i'm just this likely just needs to be a uh This troop here with boat equipment. Wait, this is weapon and 
Okay, so we're not running Angel of Glory if we do that. So instead it would be... Likely will work. And I'll work as gloves and trinket. What do we use then? Trinket we is free. Uh, oh yeah, that works perfectly. So you can put wax shot and bolt walker fate with bolt equipment. You can see that. And there was another one. Uh Legion. That is super good with that kind of deck. That has a legendary glove equipment that just produces a random human every turn, so you get a 1 1 every turn. It creates a bunch of troops, also gains you 1 armor. That would fit super well with uh, well work. Is that a glove equipment? Yeah, that's one. Yeah, we don't care about armor too. Troops you can draw. Yeah, uh, we don't care about the glove equipment that will fit. This summons a warrior and then you put you put a bunch of uh legion thing that also creates a bunch of troops. And you just yeah go super wide. I currently Yeah, I kind of like Angel of Glory though, it just wins out of nowhere. But I could see a build where you just create a bunch of random 1-1 one -one troops. That kind of work with Scrivener, right? Just creating random troops. And you can just clog the board, clog the board indefinitely. If you have a bunch of constant that just spews troops all the time. And at some point you just bulwark of fate and... Plus one, plus one to your troop, and your champion is only one. I don't know, it, 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 it's really... Like, you get ar armor one? Okay, it's one armor per troop. Yeah, so if you have a couple troops, you get a bunch of armor. I guess that works. Form ranks, I don't know. I don't know that this is a... Form ranks deck per se, but because random troop generation doesn't necessarily align. I guess if you're playing a human champion, it works, but we're playing Papa Good for the health triggers, so I don't think that works. I can see no Angel of Glory, no Outrider. I can see changing the Outrider for. Yeah, maybe these two equipment slots are very, very strong. So I can see removing the angel for, you know, cards that use these slots that will do some amazing things. There certainly are, but I kind of like the angel right now. The last deck that I'm trying right now was... Uh, let me just delete this one. The last one was the Sockets build, and this one does some fantastic things, uh, really aimed at uh, dealing with uh, decks that go wide and tends to just jam the board with blockers. Uh, what's going to happen is that on turn 4 it will target the biggest troop that it, that it has and give it flight. And at some point it's going to play Quenchineer, which equates to another True get flight. Um, Arts one color as uh, feral, so it's hard to block, and it also uh, also provides uh, charges. We're using the uh, equipment on this amazing card here. That is just a sleeper for PVE for red decks. Uh, I believe most aggressive red decks should be running this card with the head equipment. On, on 4, you get a 3-2 speed with the gem attacker. That is going to permanently 
add a line to all opposing troops that say they, this can't block. So from that point forward, the attacker cannot block. And if you have any kind of aggressive day, and on turn 4 you get a big attack in, you kind of you either kill the AI on the next turn or you lose because the AI is just going to attack again and you, and, and you can't block and you just lose so that very 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 strong card it, it has done fantastic things in testing for me and uh, yeah giving it speed is just amazing uh, running a random Eldritch Dreamer with drawing cards uh, likely should be a two drop of sword uh, and running we've got a lot of equipment open with this deck so just running return to cinders with uh, two damage to two opposing troops and they void them so against the um, this is for the the, the wardens deck the little pad wardens deck and in general it's just naturally very very good against it because biggest thing flies and uh, you just get to void things and you get to pressure them super hard super early uh, mc has flight so it generates a ton of card advantage three cost archon of nilzan is just it's just insane and sometimes it's turn two so i mean not even much to discuss here it's just uh we know how strong this this archetype is but i, I really like the angle of using uh, fitter drifting and using the quenchinator to gain charges let's just like all your big troops have flight and at some point you just if if the opponent has any blocker right even flight troops you just remove them you just remove all blockers with uh Manica Ripper, so and you get to have a top end with uh Art of Dark Heart of Nozan. I run um can be targeted by opposing card two or less has to be wrong. It, 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 surely this is not the right gem for it. I'm not quite sure what gems we're running on this one, it might just be Gladiator. Um but we run double damage on this one because um when the AI decides to target something with uh fitter drifting it usually targets the biggest troop or often it will go with the uh, rarity right so it knows that the heart is super strong so it tends to target dark heart and it has double damage so it's uh it becomes an you know fly evasive eight damage to the face uh and that's super super cool i don't have a ton of data on the on the deck but it works i'm running the equipment on uh on sentry but the i just doesn't use it so don't if you don't have it just it's not a problem not a problem at all <laughs> if you don't have dark heart you can run something else in its place key cards are mcs and uh arca uh, animus if you have them the rest is just you know Quenchinator is not that bad. The rest are, you know, a couple of uncommons and commons. Uh, Shard base is super strong because we get to run the uh, remnant of innovation and the well of innovation, so you don't need slow shards at all, which helps the deck a ton since it's it is an aggressive deck. So this one is cool. So that's my lineup for now. Uh, did we get attacked while we were discussing? No. Alright. Uh, we could attack now. Oh, well, yes. 237. We're definitely trying that. No way we're not trying that. So the attack deck I'm, I'm running right now um, is a Lily Groove Warden deck. Um, it's one that runs... The difference between the other versions that you will encounter is that I run a Guidance in the, in the list and I run 
sunlit sentence. I also run a bit less shards because of guidance. Uh, let's see. This is an aggressive deck. And this is not a good end at all. Four aggressive decks. So we're going to switch. Um, yeah, we're going to keep that. On the draw, this is likely suicide again, but we'll see. At least we've got a turn two, even if we get a slow shard. Uh, most of the things are blood. It might get in trouble, but no ruby and no turn two is... Oh, this is perfect. Okay. We're definitely in this game now. See what happens next. Okay, no ruby was nice. Oh, that's cool. Um, we're not playing victory just yet. We need to stabilize. Got a good board right now. Just need some shards, and this would be great. Okay, we're definitely doing that. This is double damage, right? Oh, it's not double damage. Yeah, we take four. Four ranks. Oh, okay. That's properly aggressive. I'm going to gamble on getting a quick shard, a fast shard. Okay. I kind of want three, def three attack on these two. Deal with these. So I'm going to put the victory in. That might be the, a misplay, depending on what he runs, but. Yeah, Swift Strike because of three troops is a bit of annoying. Uh, I'm going to take Grid here so that they don't have Swift Strike. And it has to be, yeah, it has to be the Warden. All right, we managed to stay. Ah, crap. Swift strike again. Taking four. We can certainly generate a ton of troop. Uh, oh, this is great. All right. All right. Yuck. This has to die. If we kill these two, we're going to be in a good spot. But if we do that, it means we're taking... We're dying. So, we can kill this. I really, really want to kill this. Do we take five? Kill these two? Because there's no way we, we can win this game if this is on the board. Because uh, our troop coming into play exhausted. That's just not going to work. So we have to take five. And we're not even losing Warden. I think this is the way we do this. Yeah, that's not super great, but now... Okay, I've got a wide range of blockers. Um, you know what? This is what I want.
Because now we're training troops, and at some point I'm going to get something that's invincible. Even if they're swift strike, we're going to be able to deal with them. Oh, this is great. Uh, this attack likely means form ranks. So we're going to just block a ton. No form ranks. That's okay, though. We get Dorman 1. And uh, now we've got another victory. And we just attack for the rim, right? 7, 13 plus, yeah. Oh, it could be a trap. I don't think it, it runs a lot of things with speed. And we're at 4. So, can we just... 18... Yeah, we can keep something in defense. Uh, like... Warden. Okay, that's fine. Alright, so... Yeah, I'm going to share the decklist after this fight. After this attack. That was a cool list, though. Uh, as an attacking deck... The uh, Wounded War Heroes with Swift Strike. This is so hard to deal with on defense uh, when you're uh, when you're behind, right? Super hard to deal with. All right. So what are we facing? Elk gain with. Uh, Devil Crusaders with, yeah. And with the Recruiter. And it's playing the Ed Cover. Okay. Okay. Alright. We should be okay. The way we want to play this game is get to 5 resources. This matchup is going to be get up to 5 resources holding Sunlit Sentence. And at some point it's going to attack with everything. We're going to wipe the board and then we're going to win. So we want to set up a sunlit sentence. That's that's our goal. This is not great at all. Can we do this? So first turn no threshold second turn we play a diamond we play guidance get another shard third turn groove warden or corpse lily it's super slow i worry that it's too slow so we're just going to ship that all right Good old start with a start with a an ice. We've got a play. Oh, that that we're lucky with that today. If we get to attack with this, we will be in a very good spot. It appears that we're going to get to attack with it. No uh, shard, but this is a fairly good start. Hey, Besnatch, how are you doing tonight? All right. Yeah, this this is a problem. Oh. We may just be able to outpace uh, our opponent's damage. Okay, that was not great. Do we take five? I'm going to take five now. See what we get next.
definitely getting a shard with that. So as long as this doesn't get flight. shouldn't be too bad so we can attack with this for sure and we can chum block and if he attacks with this as a big troop without swift strike we can ah swift strike it had to be swift strike Okay, that's a big problem. That doesn't change anything. All right, AI is AI thinks it's on the defensive right now, so it's not attacking. But we've got some more to work with. This this situation here, we really, really want a dormant one, because if the AI starts attacking. This is what happens, and we really want uh, an edix as well. So I don't think AI yeah, didn't attack next, last turn, so we're going to bank on it not attacking this turn. Because I do want the edix. An edix ensures that the opponent doesn't keep cards in hand, which is super important. Yeah. No attack. All right. All right. We can do this. Uh, yeah, this is going to be the priority, and we start attacking. We need to ensure that the eye uh, doesn't want to attack, so making sure that it doesn't gain health is the key here, and we should be good. Um, Play this. Again, gambling on the eye not attacking. Because it's low on health. And we have a lot of troops. And the eye just, just doesn't register uh, the boons on troops for the most part. So that's why you don't see the eye right now attacking with big you know, uh, life drain troops that would just alright kill me right now. It just sees health and being on the defensive. All right, and this is one of the reasons why these troops are not that great, but they can be. Alright, uh, we don't want to attack with the uh, Dreadlings. AI, AI Defender is going to gain a million health. So we're attacking with these two here. And I should have created a a troop and then attack for more damage to ensure that the AI doesn't attack. Yeah, yeah, I figured it out. Uh we do need flight blockers now. Hmm. It's going to be hard. Yeah, we're dead. That's sad. Alright. We lost it. I missed little. Wait. I can't attack. How are oh, creating flight troops? Yeah, creating flight troops I had little. Yeah, I missed little. Should have created a bunch of flight troop. I had it. All right, do we give it another go? That's a decent amount of... Um, oh, that works too, right? It doesn't work if I attack with the Dreadling, but it does work if I uh, sacrifice the, the Dreadling. Uh, if you... Uh, let me get something straight, guys. If you watch my stream, 
expecting that there will be no errors, you should be watching another stream. My, I give you the opportunity of learning through my errors. That's my gift to you. So if you don't like that, you need to watch someone else. Let's go first. Yeah, it works. <laughs> yeah, guys, I get it. There were a billion ways to kill our opponent on that attack. Move on. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I, I don't think we've seen a lot of removal. Oh wow, okay. Oh, this is going well. Kind of one resource. Do we go super wide? This and this and this. Attack for five. <laughs> I expect a flawless stream. Well, bye bye. Nice to meet you. Oh, Hero of Legion. a bit premature. All right. Why doesn't Lady Avenge use primitive silver bag? Okay. Oh. was a key piece of the puzzle. We need six. This, 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 this. I guess we want one of these on defense and one of this. Or rather this guy here like that. can go do we trade this for both we can get to nine and be fairly open I'm worrying about the repel or something like that though we're at 25 Yeah, is not going to... Oh, they were combat tricks, right? Okay, that's fine. AI yeah, is not going to attack now. We're very unlikely. Ooh. Lady Cassandra. That's cool. No attacks. Okay. Hey, we've got some sentence now. Uh... Do we just bait an attack? Exhaust everything? Do I have enough? Four blockers. Blocks. One, two, three, four means... Two. Is it lethal? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, wait, that, wait, six, he blocks four. That means four damage and then one and two. There's no life gain. I think that's game. If it's not game, then we have Sunlit Sentence. <laughs> uh, 
uh, yeah, I, I believe uh, JDM Jedi, if you see us, um, is Siege. He, us he usually has one of his tree decks as a slaughter gear defense deck. And it's, it's fairly decent. It holds its own, for sure. Alright. We're going to try to... One, not miss lethal. Dirt, try to find a two. Try to find a sunlit sentence. Are you kidding me? This hand again? <sighs> Guidance on turn two. All right, guys. Do you keep that hand? Hey, this is the exact same scenario. Do we mill again this one? It has everything though. We could do Ranclaw on turn two. Uh, on if we get a slow shard on turn three, we can Ranclaw and Attendant, and then we have Lily Groove. So that's a a lot of blockers um, to be able to survive. And then we have Zorvat's Rectory. But this is assuming that Guidance finds a Blood Source. If it doesn't find one, we're just dead that's a this is a hard one because his turn trees and turn fours are amazing yeah i don't want that i don't want that end this is better and we're on the draw as well it's going to be harder better start got a victory we've got a corpse lily with a warden holy hell So, this is happening. We're doing this. Aye, 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 it's not going to be easy, isn't it? 